Hello. On today's episode of the Comics Panel, we're going to be talking to Jeremy Long. All right. Jeremy Live? Long. Right from Hollywood. Straight from Hollywood. Jeremy's a friend of ours. Um, we've known him for a while, and he's helped us out with the comics panel. And he is taking the plunge Back out in, in Hollywood, out on the West Coast, uh, trying to make his mark out there, doing some stand-up, working with some different people. And he was in Supergirl. And he was in an episode of Supergirl and, and several other things. So we're very fortunate to have him back here in our hometown, and we're going to be talking to Jeremy for a little bit about comics and movies and everything else. Keep it coming. All I right. want to hear more of my accomplishments. All right. Well, we I personally haven't seen you before today in probably at least a year or so, so you've been pretty busy. I've been um, gone for almost two years. All right, then. So it's probably, yeah, two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, it, was, uh, it was back, and I did an episode at the store there when yep. we had the artist's Oh, right, but yeah. you weren't there. Yeah, right? no, I wasn't yeah. there for that. Um, I was there quickly for that, but uh, I wasn't. I seen you there, but I didn't get the chance to talk to oh, you. Oh, okay, gotcha. Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the what's going on on the West Coast and uh, just uh, comic books and everything else. It's really cool. Great. What are your Some future? of my favorite topics. <laughs> what are your future plans? for? Uh... Future plans? <laughs> well, hopefully... Um, I will be writing for a TV show soon. Very cool. Yeah, that's, cool. The, that's the goal. All right, so you said you're in a comic book, so a little bit about you. Do you have a favorite comic title you read, and, and do you still read them these days, or are you pretty busy for that? Very busy, yeah, yeah, yeah. In fact, um, when I moved, uh, when I was here, I would uh, go over to Ralph's at Comics and Paperbacks Plus. In Palmyra. Open for, I don't know. Uh, and uh, yeah, and I, I was a loyal customer of his. And then uh, when I moved, I tried to find, not try to, because there's more comic book places than you could throw a rock at out in California. But uh, I was trying to find my favorite. Um, and then I just didn't because I just don't have time to, I didn't have the time or money at first. And um, so I haven't gotten a new one in a while and I fell behind on a lot of series. But um I am still an avid comic fan, and I still have a large collection at my place. What are some of the titles you enjoyed reading? I like a lot of the... Um, well, I do enjoy many of the superhero comics, of course, a lot of the classics. Um, I also like a lot of the alternative comics, so some of my favorites have been like Why the Last Man. Cool stuff. And uh, Preacher and uh, Saga and stuff like that. Yeah, a lot of Vertigo stuff. The, the yeah, DC, a lot of Vertigo the, stuff. The alternative fantasy mm -hmm. things like that. That's cool. I know we were talking off camera, and he said it'd be cool to do an X Men movie. So Brian Singer, <laughs> if you're out there listening, <laughs> put him in an X Men movie. They're my favorite. Yeah. Oh, I also like. I think probably the favorite comic. Well, it's a graphic novel. The fa my my favorite graphic novel and just one of the best stories I've ever read of all time is called Blankets. I'm not sure if you guys ever yeah. read that one. Yeah. Scott Thompson, I think his name is. Great. Yeah, that's excellent. That's a great one. Um, that's a good one to because we've never mentioned that. Um, so that's a good one to uh, to pick up and read if you want to take a chance on something. Take a chance on something great. Yeah. Just one big cohesive story. That's a big book. So with all the new movies coming out, and is there anything that you're looking forward to? Oh, uh, uh, superhero movies related. Superhero movies yeah. specifically. Um, Suicide Squad, which is coming out soon. That looks totally awesome. That one I'm stoked for. Um, Margot Robbie, hubba hubba. Yeah. <laughs> um, I only recently found out she's only 26, so she's in my league, age wise. But um, <laughs> you threw that in there. <laughs> and um, we'll see. But no, I think I'm really stoked for that one. And um, but they just released a trailer for Justice League, which looks really good. Yeah. Well, I guess uh, I'm always stoked for Marvel stuff because I'm more, I'm Strange? partial to Marvel. I think Doctor Strange looks good. But I'm really interested, even though they haven't released a trailer or anything for it yet. I'm interested in the new Thor coming out. That looks good too. Yeah. I read online it's going to be a combination of the Ragnarok and Planet Hulk. Yeah. Which will be interesting to see how they're gonna blend the two together i'm yeah. still it's quite far off but i'm still interested in uh the third and fourth uh two-parter 
of Infinity exactly. Wars for Avengers yeah. and how they're going to squeeze everybody in there. How they're going to make that work. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> I think but, they've got an uphill climb there. <laughs> and how so many we'll more see how it turns have. out. I trust, uh, I do trust the Russo brothers because they did um, Winter Soldier and Civil War, yeah. which are both, both good. excellent yeah. movies. And of yep. course, they were writers um, for two of my favorite sitcoms of all time, Arrested Development and Community. Excellent. Yeah. So they have a bit of a com- com- comedy background I, on two great shows, which is why I think those two movies in particular had some good comedy elements yeah. too, mixing with the action. They got, like you said, they got a good track record on comedy, and, and for those Marvel movies, they got they need, a good track record. So those were two of the best they, ones. They yeah. could really yeah. keep them on, and yeah, they're it'd a good be choice. hard to see them fail. Civil on War a had, a dedica- had a small... small uh, Wink, wink and a nod to both those shows they worked on by having uh, Jim Rash, who played the dean on Community, play a dean of a college at the beginning of uh, Civil War. And then also on the airport scene in Civil War, if you've seen the movie, they have a stair car in the background from Arrested Development, just hidden in the background. There. That's cool. So That's they, cool. they threw those in there, I read. If you Little didn't get gems and Easter fun. eggs, you find out yeah. one of these things when you have someone to do somebody. And if, you, <laughs> and if you didn't get a chance to see the movie, definitely it's worthwhile to go see it. Every superhero has their own moment, That's and true. the great one-liners are fantastic in there. and doesn't take away from the movie. It just adds to the movie. And it was very well written. So definitely worthwhile. If you didn't see the movie, definitely buy it on DVD. I know I am. Yeah, it's coming out soon, I think. Yeah, pretty soon, anyway. I cannot wait. All right, so what have you been working on out there that doesn't necessarily have to be comic-related? I um, sense I, even magic, though, Dr. Strange. I don't know if you knew, <laughs> yeah, um, uh, we had mentioned quickly that he was in an episode of Supergirl. That's true, that's true, which was great since I am a nerd and a comic <laughs> fan. Out of all the uh, acting stuff I did, that was a real treat. Excellent. Um, Carbonero. I work full time on a show called The Carbonero Effect. Good yeah. show. Uh, right now we're in between seasons. Uh, season two wrapped at the end of June, and then we're coming back for season three at some point. Is there any show that sticks out in your mind in particular that you thought was just it was awesome? Uh, any, Better than uh, than well, all yeah. the other ones. I mean, is there oh one an episode of Carbonero Effect sticks out more so than all the other? Oh, episodes? my personal favorite. I wasn't on season one. What they do is they break up into two halves. So there was uh, the front order of season one is 13 episodes, and then the back order is two ep- or 13 episodes. And then, but there's a break in between, um, both for us and on television. So it kind of seems like there's been more than two seasons so mm-hmm. far, because they've each had two different parts. Um, but it's only been technically two seasons. Um, so I was on for the full second season, the front okay. order and the back order. So I don't know as much about the first season, but from the second season that I've worked on, um, my personal favorite was this episode where they, the final bit of the episode, which is always the longest, was called A Premonition. Okay. That was the name of the bit where they were working in a warehouse, and we call him the Mark, who's the guy they're yeah. playing the trick on, who doesn't know he's on television, he or she. And uh, he's, uh, he, he's, they're like storing stuff in the warehouse, and Michael asks him, to bring a vase over. He's like, can you hand me item 227D or whatever it is? And he brings over this vase and Michael puts it up and it fall, uh, uh, oh, as he's putting it up, they have another guy who was one of our crew members go, Michael, I'm going to, I'll be back. See ya. And, uh, he's like, okay, see you Sunday. And then the guy leaves and then he drops the vase and it shatters. And when the Mark goes over to get a broom and scoop, he comes back and all of a sudden the vase pieces aren't there anymore. And the vase is back over where he originally got it. And Michael goes, could you hand me 227D? And he starts <laughs> yeah. over again. And that guy comes by again and goes, hey, see you later, Michael. And he's like, see you Sunday. And the guy's like, what the hell? <laughs> Deja vu. And he's like, didn't you? And then, yeah. So that was That's my cool. personal favorite, I think. That's one that stands out to me the most. It was funny. And of course, the, some of that was, of course, planned. But the magic part of it was where the pieces go and how to get back over there all together again. That's which pretty I cool. cannot reveal. <laughs> That's cool. It's definitely an interesting show. If you never saw it, check it out. Mm-hmm. It's not comic related, but it's very cool. Yeah, yeah. It's a little bit of prank, a yeah. little bit of reality, a yeah. little bit of magic, magician stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it Michael, is pretty fun. Michael's a fun guy to work for, and he just recently received the very first David Copperfield Award. Or oh, something. Cool. very cool. Some, called something like that, but they just created the award, and he was the first recipient. Nice. Of it just a couple weeks ago. Now, yeah. how how cool would that be? 
to bring somebody like that in to a superhero movie that would involve magic, saucer of some sort or whatever, and they do their own tricks. <laughs> you don't, you don't have you no special effects. They yeah. just do it themselves. <laughs> it might cut down the budget a little bit. but That's really cool. Um, what else have you worked on? Um, doesn't have to be recent. Um, uh, well, uh, in, in between uh, what we call the hiatus, in between seasons, we all... Uh, go off the show and do our own thing for a little bit and uh some of some of the more maybe more richer folks are <clears throat> lucky enough to just be able to chill around do whatever but i i do some other work during that period of time so that's when i try and do some of my acting work yeah and uh so that's when i was in supergirl and uh, a couple other shows i was in episode of mom but they cut me out with uh anna ferris what, what was some of the other shows you were in um i was also in uh, the muppets which got canceled <laughs> Probably because I was in it, <laughs> and uh, um, Code Black. Code Black. Code Black I was yeah. gonna, there was one other one that I can't think of right now for some reason. But yeah, and Code Black, and uh, Code Black was Code Black. I was on the most. I was on three episodes, and uh, you know most of these things. You know when you're a background or even a feature background or whatever, you're in it for a day, maybe two or three days if you're lucky or whatever. Code Black. They just they had me on as a paid regular, so I was on for uh, almost two months. Cause the t- I was in three episodes. It takes about a little less than two weeks to film an episode. So that was the I met a lot of people there, and I and I had a lot of fun on that set. Probably one of the, my favorite sets to be on. Excellent. Yeah, it's that a good show awesome. too. Yeah, it is a good show. Yeah. What was I gonna ask? Now? I, was, I was drawing <laughs> a blank. I was drawing a blank, and my the wheels are turning. I'm still trying to think of the other show. But I can't think well, of Well, you do stand up a lot too. And yeah. uh, you work with Andy Dick and mm-hmm. a few other people. A few other people, yes. Uh, do you like doing stand up as well as doing like acting stuff? Or is it just kind of whatever's I coming your way? I prefer it. I only do the background stuff really to make money anymore. I'm not yeah. really interested in pursuing acting as I perhaps once was as a youngster. Uh, I remember being really into acting yeah. when I was a kid, and it's like, yeah. And then once you kind of get older and also learn more about the business, like I did through both uh, schooling, personal research, and then finally getting into the business once I moved out there, it's like, eh, maybe not so much anymore. Um, I don't think I had the, exactly the chops for it, uh, nor do I have the thick skin enough for the constant rejection and the struggle that they go through. So um, I applaud anybody who does it, and. Uh, while those you know, are usually the people that stand out the most as far as fame is concerned, I don't necessarily need fame. So my goal these days are to try and get into writing. It's what I really enjoy. That's my true passion. So whether it's writing on a TV show or being a screenwriter of some kind, that's what I am trying to work my way up towards. Awesome. And stand up's just a good platform to do that. Yes. Um, well, yeah, it is. Well, you have to write your own jokes and all yeah, that yeah, other yeah. stuff and come up with good concepts. And, so that's and what I like Even if it's that. a small, simple thing, you've got to make it. Mm-hmm. worth people wanting to hear what you have to say. It's half Make of, it interesting. It's half of writing and creating, which is what I like to do, and then half performing, which is the other part that I sometimes do. So it's a combination of those two things um, with the instant feedback. You know, when you're yeah. filming something, you don't get that instant feedback, but you do when you're performing live on stage, which I, uh, I uh, like better. Well, you know right away. Yeah. <laughs> One way or the yeah, other. Yeah, yeah. I like I like knowing right away. Then I can... Oh, well, maybe not that. Uh, okay, not that one. <laughs> or sometimes, you know, sometimes you just have bad shows. You know you have solid material, and then you just have a bad night or a bad audience. Yeah. You're like, well, I know that works, so this was just a bad night, and you tr- scratch it up to that. All right. It depends what kind of humor they're looking for that night. And, yeah. Know, it's yeah. a mixed crowd. And you can have one like... night, do the exact, literally the exact same 10-minute set and kill one of their best shows yet, and then do the exact same 10-minute set the following night at the exact same venue with a different crowd and bomb so sometimes it doesn't it doesn't even matter what the jokes are it's partially the audience partially your presentation of the jokes all kinds of stuff go into effect yeah so you said you want to get into writing are you working on any kind of scripts right now i'm working on two scripts right now i have a movie that i wrote that we're in pre-production on um uh there's a producer uh, who is a friend of mine. I worked with her on a short film when I first moved to California, only a few months afterwards. Um, I had this, this script I wrote before I even moved, 
and uh, it was just sitting in a drawer collecting dust because there was nothing I could do with it here. Um, but then once I started mingling with the Hollywood people out there, I sent it around to a few people, mostly just to get their opinion on it, really. I didn't think mm -hmm. anything would come of it. I was like, hey, if you have a chance, read this, let me know what you think. That kind of thing was what I was thinking. And she said, let's make this. She was really stoked about it. So we're working on it. We're in oh, pre-production. Cool. And then um, somehow that continued to get passed around, and I got contacted by somebody else who read it, liked it, and wanted to hire me to write their script. So I'm working on that script currently. Nice. Oh, that's awesome. Nice. It's a small, low-budget indie film, but yeah. Well, speaking so. of writing, and since you like comics, with the number of shows that are on Netflix and on TV and movies, is there any one character or a comic book title that is not made in movies yet, or a TV show, or Netflix, that you think would be really cool to write the script for? Oh, Superhero related or comics in general? Comic in general. Related. Comics in general. in general. Oh, yeah. Be it superhero, Vertigo, whatever. That hasn't been done. Well, I'd love to make... I said it already, but I'd love to oh. make blankets, blankets into a movie. Really. Yeah. Seriously. That would um, be cool. That would be a really good... That would be a good one to see on the screen, I think. Personally. So that would be one. Because that's just such a good story to me. Um, so that'd be mine. Um... On a different take on your question, I wouldn't want to write it because I'd screw it up. But I, some, some, I, 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 I'm one of those people that really want Black Widow to get their own movie, even though she's in the Avengers movie. That I could be her, cool. I want her to have her yeah. own. I wouldn't want to write for it, but I'm, I'm hoping that. I, I don't think you're alone on that one. <laughs> <laughs> a but, lot of people um, would like to see that. I know they're working on. You know, I really, I mentioned earlier that I like Preacher a lot too, and I know they're already working. Is it out? Yeah, oh yeah, it's it's out. Out. yeah, yeah. I haven't yeah. watched it, but or AMC because yeah, Seth yeah. Rogen produced it. Him and Evan Goldberg. Yeah. So I should watch that, I guess. I'm behind. <laughs> You're behind. Um, and then I know also um, the, the guy who wrote Brian Vaughn, who wrote uh, so Why the Last Why Man and Saga. Saga, they're not working on it as far as I know, but there's a script for Why the Last Man as a movie floating around. And That's it has been, been floating been around for a, for a while. Yeah. So I don't know if that'll ever happen. That'd be really cool. And who better to write it than him? And I know he's worked on a lot of TV shows too. Like I'd like Under to see Dome. that more of a TV show. Yeah, it would, well, yeah, it would be good as that. Yeah. If, yeah, if it's anybody it's humongously a long, yeah. and yeah, it's there's a books, lot yeah. of, of well, not humongously, but yeah. it, there's a lot of character development that you would never be able to get even in like two movies. Even, or three. Yeah. Maybe a cool Netflix. Yeah, yeah. It would have to be, you know, a series. It would on be television. cool as a Netflix original series. Oh, yeah. since they're doing a lot of those. It would work for that. Maybe he'll find. Maybe he'll find it that way. That would be a perfect fit, as far as I'm concerned. I hope they do it's that. Apocalyptic that's type of stuff, but not quite always so dark. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly. It's not quite as dark. There's as a like, lot of humor. Yeah. Oh and, yeah. And he's as great. Like he's Walking just a great Dead writer. Or, you know, that can get pretty. Uh, I you forget know, what depressing. other shows he worked. I know the one that comes to mind first was the uh, Under the Dome series. I know oh, yeah. he wrote on yeah on me almost all the episodes of that. But I, f I know there was other TV shows he worked on too. So he's been in you know the TV world too. Well, there's a suggestion not just for comics. you. <laughs> Why the Last Man? That's what we want so to see. Let's get it. Yeah, let's get it made finally. I Why think it's not? Been floating around Why for not? Like ten years. <laughs> yeah, there's the campaign. Why not? <laughs> With a question mark. So yeah, those are some that I want to see. Cool. It's a good book, and Netflix. You're always saying you're looking for original stories and content. There's one to take. Yeah, a shot. Netflix. <laughs> Netflix has been Get great. On the stick. I gotta yes. be honest. As far as their original content is concerned, I don't think there's a show I haven't enjoyed yet or I, a movie. I know Longmire was on A and E, and they picked that one up. And I know a couple guys that watch it, and they said, "Oh, it's just as great. You yeah. know, it just keeps going on, and they could just watch." Oh, Jack Horseman so. is amazing. Daredevil. Um, I didn't see Daredevil yet, but I like. I, oh, you were saying about good. Jessica Jones. Yeah. Jessica Jones that. was good. I really like that. Also, obviously, House of Cards, Orange is the New Black, some of their more popular yeah. ones. Uh, Narcos was really good. So their their original content is spot on. Spot on. Excellent. Excellent. Right. Is there anything else we have for him today? Um, I, do. I, do. I do. All right. All right. Brogan's All right. in. All right. Uh, who there invited him? This, no, no, sit down, <laughs> sir. Sit down, sir. Age-old question. We ask all new victims, uh, people that come on this show, if. You found a copy of Action Number One. What's Action Number One? Superman's action first appearance. Okay. Action Comics Number One. I'm I'll sorry. trust you on that one. It is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Don't touch me. There. Now, <laughs> if you found a copy, now let's just say it's it was the most valuable comic. It's the world. most valuable. It's the holy grail gotcha. of the comics. So you found it. I guess I'm not that. You're well not that much of a I'm comic well, fanboy. Not well you're versed. Not. No, you're not. Not yet. So, 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 so. Yeah. Okay. 
buttons. Yes, that's right. So anyway, if you found it, and it's a good condition, let's just say you can get $2 million for it. Sure. Would you sell the issue or keep it? Go. Sell it. Oh, oh. yeah, baby! <laughs> yes, you're I, the man. I would read it and then I'd sell it. <laughs> No, no, you wouldn't read it because you don't want to be valued. Well, no, he can read it if he wants I'd be to. Awfully, I'd be awfully, awfully careful what he would with do. it, and then I would sell it. He finally gets somebody even to if it deprived the, the even if it right deprived away. the value half, I'd still get a million dollars, according to you. Was it? Was it? I'd pay off my student loans. He's just buy a static. Nice was it stuff that said another? she would take a selfie with it first and then sell it? See, oh, who said that? That's a good idea. Not everybody. Yeah, that's a good well, idea. Well, yeah, I was everybody. losing. Yeah, you were losing. Make sure, take a video of it so people See, then think you photoshopped a selfie. One of yeah. our first ones we said that when we did the, the panel in the first, that was one of our first bits. These guys, I had him on my side, and then I would Andy keep it for, if I really <laughs> needed it. Jedi mind trick. Them, oh, yeah. Right? And I was like, no, you take a pic, because if you keep it, you have to buy insurance for it. You have to put security in your house or buy a vault or something because. People say no. We're just putting the safety deposit Well, I wouldn't be telling anybody. It'd be safe, <laughs> yeah. locked well, then up. what's the point of having it? Because it's, tell it's history. You have it. To enjoy it yourself? I would not it. Unless there's like that guy. It's to load it over others. There's no, that guy. <laughs> I won. The director says, yeah, God, God, because you, you won guys took on this one. I got We're this one. I'm still ahead. That's my time. That's my time. Okay, if you get tired of the same old story, turn some comic book pages, leave Bob, go, go, I didn't hear one word of that last part. <laughs> Something like, like that. A, like like a us on Facebook teacher. and subscribe so to our YouTube, YouTube channel. channel. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks a lot. And thanks, thanks for Jeremy uh, coming by and yes, talking Jeremy, to us. thank you for joining um, us tonight. Yeah, definitely. We, we definitely want to see you again and, and wish, we you, wish the you the best look. Best. And everybody yep. keep your yeah, eyes out thanks. for this guy. Um, you're going to either see his face or you're going to see his name written when he's screenwriting something. So thanks a lot. We'll see you later. Bye. Thanks.